Well, a bit of a different video this one. Um, really wish I wasn't filming this, but anyway, as you can see, I'm at the side of a road near Bambury. I've just come over the brow of the hill there, only doing 50 or so, and a whacking big deer came out that field, over the hedge, ran across the road between the traffic, slammed on my brakes, I missed it, nearly hit the traffic on the other side of the road. Um, coming from the country, I know that they never come they never come running across the road on their own, so I knew there was another one coming, but I had a car coming up fast behind me. As you can see, it's sort of a 60 mile, 70 mile an hour road. So I didn't want to come to complete standstill on the brow of a hill, so I sort of let off the brakes, carried on, and there the second deer came. Jumped over that hedge right into me, and I think my beloved Tesla Model S has just been written off. So, front grill hanging off, look at the state of the bonnet. Smashed headlight. Uh, there's the remains of the deer, that's dead on the side of the road. It hit the bonnet, tumbled up over my windscreen. Um, wing is caved in a bit, the bonnet's all popped on. Good job the airbags never went off. And then it ended up on the windscreen and then rolled off the side. So that's it. My two years of Tesla Model S ownership, I think, has just come to an end. It's so frustrating, particularly as I'd almost, well, not come to a stop, but I'd slowed right down from sort of 50 to 25 or 20 or so. Lifted off the brakes just because a car was coming very fast ahead of me. And then whack, this deer just jumped out. And by that time it jumped out, it was virtually... I don't know, it was less than a metre away from it. I had no chance of stopping at all. Um, so, yeah, so frustrating. I've now got to decide whether I can drive this back. I'm, I'm about an hour away. Um, I think it's still drivable. There was no errors on the dash. i just got to make sure all this is OK and um, probably take the grill off. Ah, so disappointing. Um, this has been such a nice car and I'm not going to find another one the same as this. This one is such a good one. Being metallic green, I love the colour. New battery pack underneath, new rear wheel drive motor as well. It's got the interior I like. Um, and this is only a week after I've recorded a video about how I think this is the best electric car for 20 grand, which that video is going live next weekend. So, um... Anyway, there we go. I know this sort of thing happens. I've been driving now for, what, 30-something years? 30... Uh, 20, uh, I don't know, what's that? 30... 36 years. I've only ever had one accident, and again, that was hitting a deer. But it didn't do as much damage as this one, I don't think. But anyway, yeah, two accidents in my lifetime, both deers, but then that's what you get when you're... Driving on country rural roads, so I've walked up. There's the deer. Great big thing it is. Obviously, it's going up that track there, but you can see why I couldn't stop to a full stop because I'm right on the brow of the hill, and I had cars right up behind me because it is a fast road. Oh, there's bits of my headlight on the road there as well. But yeah, that went over my bonnet and windscreen and fell back onto the bank. So I managed to drive the vehicle back last night um, without needing a tow truck. It all still drove okay. It's rubbing quite a bit on the wheel, but uh, I, it wasn't dark, so I managed to get back before I needed lights. Um, I was a bit sort of flustered when I recorded the video yesterday, so um, I'll basically just tell you what happened. I was driving along, probably doing 50 maybe 55, and this deer jumped over the hedge into the road. I slammed on my brakes and missed it, and it ran across the other side of the road through oncoming traffic, and miraculously it ran between two cars doing about 60 miles an hour and didn't get hit. I'd slowed, I slammed on my brakes, and I'd slowed to probably 20, 25 miles an hour. And I'd almost come to a complete stop, but I'd missed the deer. But I knew there might be more coming uh, because they usually run along in packs, don't they? So, um, but at this point, I'd almost come to a stop, but I had cars coming up the hill behind me doing about 60. 
and I was right on the brow of the hill and they wouldn't have seen me and they would have just stoved into the back of me so I couldn't afford to come to a complete stop so I had to then start driving and just as I started moving this second deer ran out and at this point it was only two metres or less in front of the car probably only a metre in front of the car it's right it jumped across the hedge right in front of me as I was moving I had no chance of stopping plus I had these cars coming up behind me so it hit here obviously rolled up the bonnet its head hit the windscreen there's all its saliva still on the windscreen I looked him in the eyeballs as he as she went over um, went onto the glass roof and then fell off the side and onto the bank so uh, at that point I had to um, keep moving because I had these cars coming up very close behind me and drove down the road where I could safely get off the road and stop. So anyway, that's what happened. So I managed to drive it back. It drove just fine actually. There was a bit of uh, rubbing here. Uh, the wheel arch liner is um, pushed up against the tyre a little bit, so a bit of rubbing when I went over undulations and things when I was steering. but. It's fine, far better I drove back than waiting hours and hours for a recovery truck. It also rained last night so the car's had a good clean now and a lot of the um, muck from the deer has actually been washed off and I have been around and picked up all the bits of broken plastic or anything that would fall off I've removed. But anyway let's have a look, a little uh, walk around and show you the damage and then we can have a little vote maybe in the comments and see whether you think this will be repaired or written off. So obviously it needs a bonnet, it needs a front bumper, it needs a headlight, it needs a um, cornering light down here, uh, the grill with the moving flaps down here will need changing, uh, the nose cone is also split that's in the boot, um, uh, obviously needs a wing, amazing that wing has been torn there. Uh, and then wheel arch liner, there's a lot of plastic in there as well which will need replacing. But have a look at the main um, crash bar across there, that looks fairly straight. Um, the other thing that does worry me a little bit is this seems to be uh, pushed up a little bit, that gap has increased there, I know Teslas uh, are known for their big panel gaps but that wasn't like that this well it's so either that is stayed stationary and the wing has moved maybe you know, that's more likely the wing has moved out but this didn't quite look like that but anyway um so yeah wing on this side it's amazing that there isn't any damage to the mirror because the deer went over the bonnet it ended up on it on the windscreen its head hit the windscreen because i looked straight into its eyeball it then sort of went on the roof a bit and then fell off down the side but I know the car's dirty but there's no noticeable damage or scratches not even minor scratches to the side you would have thought the weight of it might have easily broken the mirror off so I was lucky in that respect however it did damage the sunroof here there's about two and a half inches I can't really reach of where the glass has sort of become well the black areas come sort of delaminated from the glass it's a bit strange and the rubber's damaged a little bit any minor but yeah, clearly, I don't know if it's a hoof or something, but it's damaged the sunroof as well. And then even though this side looks all good, the wing has moved here, and this huge gap has appeared here. So yeah, shouldn't be like that, of course. Um, so whether that's the structure underneath has moved or that needs a new wing, strange because all of this looks okay. However, uh, there is a big gap here. Um, I know many might say well that's normal Tesla particularly on a generation one model s but yeah that's um, gap has uh, increased here but of course it's a big plastic bumper and it's all deformed so yeah you'd expect that so let's have a look see if we can open up the bonnet and have a look underneath there so I have actually opened this already because I've removed the uh, panels on either side to have a look at the structure so when you look under here, this, these panels that the wings bolt to all look okay and where the hinges bolt to, even though this bonnet has sort of been pushed up that way, I thought this would all look worse. So um, they all look straight still. 
However, this main cast piece, which I think goes across all the front of the car, well, there's the other side of it there. So yeah, the whole front section of the car, you can see there where that's moved. So is it this panel's moved or is this all been deformed? I don't know, not by much, but it's enough. You know, a few millimeters there will be a centimeter this side. So yeah, damage to that. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of plastic underneath there. There's this other um, this other structure here, whether that's the same as that. Yes, that's all that's all that. So possibly that needs change uh, replacing. And then you've got your your crash bar here. But generally the sort of structure underneath doesn't seem too bad, but whether it is moved enough that it needs replacing i don't know i'm going to have to um, let the body shop have a look at that and um, look at the look at that in more detail but you can see here got all the bits from the headlight god there's a lot of plastic in it still actually look at all that lot Ugh. but um oh, what a mess it's such it's such a shame. <laughs> Actually, that, bum, that uh, bonnet going down is holding all of that broken plastic in. So, what do you think? Do you think this is going to be repaired or written off? Obviously, it can be repaired. It just depends on what the cost is. But I have a feeling this is going to get written off. And it will be such a shame if it gets written off. The problem I'm going to have now is sort of negotiating the value of this because obviously your insurance company will just look at the age and the mileage and come up with the value. The problem is this is a pretty rare one and um, I would almost say unique but maybe that's pushing it a bit far. It's probably not unique but um, it's a bit different from all the others out there. Um, firstly it's in green, not that, that makes any difference but I really like this metallic green and these were only available um, early in 2014 so there's very few of these in the UK um, but anyway that doesn't change the value but this car has had a new traction battery recently just before the eight-year warranty ran out it's also had a new drive motor it's got free supercharging it's also got the CCS upgrade and it's also got the MCU2 upgrade so it's got the new computer and screens so um, it's a difficult one to value obviously that new battery and new motors have pretty much a new powertrain does add value but whether i can make the insurance company realize that is another story so write in the comments below let's have a little vote do you think this is going to get repaired or do you think it's going to get written off it's such a shame i've really enjoyed this car i know cars are just metal boxes which gets us around but i was really fond of this green metal box so anyway now i've just got to let the insurance company deal with it i'm not going to take any car hire even though i could i want to just keep the cost of the total claim down if uh, if i can um, sort of manage it myself if i can i used to be involved with that sort of thing anyway in a previous life um, because ultimately i'm not claiming it off anyone else it will be uh, against me against the business policy and i just want to keep the total value of this claim down so i'm not taking car hire uh, if it's going into a body shop, it will be going into one that I know um, and I know they're very reasonable on EV repairs, whereas a lot of them just completely rip the insurance companies off. So I'm going to try to keep the cost of this down as much as I can, but even so, I have a feeling it's going to be too costly to repair on uh, a 2014 one like this. So anyway, I'll uh, let you all know when I've got an outcome whether this is going to be repaired or written off. Uh, if it's going to be repaired, there's going to be a lot of parts needs uh, to be ordered and obviously they can take a long time. So I have a feeling this is going to be off the road for many, many weeks or even many, many months. Anyway, I'll uh, do an update uh, when I've got some more news. So that will do for this video. Okey doke. I'll see you on the next one.